Adobe Photoshop is a great program to use if you're doing a lot of designing and doing a lot of full color high detail work such as four color process or simulated process. Now keep in mind Adobe does make a couple different versions of Photoshop. It has a basic version it's called Adobe Elements Photoshop. Elements is a very basic version of Photoshop and doesn't give you the functionality needed for screen printing. So if you're only doing one or two color shirts, mainly just one color shirts, you can design text and maybe do some basic logo stuff in, in Photoshop Elements. But if you really want to get into layering and color separation, you need a full version of Adobe Photoshop. The newest version is CS4. I'm going to be using CS3, which is much the same as CS4. And there's also older versions of Photoshop that you can get, like 6.0, 7.0 and CS1. These versions will also work for screen printing, so if you can't afford the newest and greatest, you can always get an older version and it will work just great for you. Adobe Photoshop is a raster based artwork program, so when you're working with Photoshop, resolution is extremely important. Now this is a Photoshop blank screen. A couple things to keep in mind, I'll do a quick introduction. You have your file menu, this is where you're going to open up a new image, import something, export something. You have your edit menu, your image menu and your layer menu are probably going to be the two most important menus you'll be using in Photoshop. And you have other things called select, filter, view, and window in which you can arrange the windows over here on the right side of the screen. Then you have your palette. This is a very important part of Photoshop as well. Your palette inc includes all your important tools that you'll be using to do the artwork and color separations in Photoshop. When we go to open a new image, the one thing we need to keep in mind is that we need to work in a high quality resolution. When you're working in Photoshop, a lot of times it will default to a 72 DPI or resolution. Now this is the main type of resolution that you're going to see in things like the internet. When you import something from the internet into Photoshop, it's going to open an internet photo right here like a lion shield and to import into Photoshop all we have to do is drag it in as long as it's a JPEG. If we zoom in on this image, we can see the low quality resolution in it. As the image gets bigger, the resolution degrades because it only has so much information per section of that image. To find the image resolution, all we need to do is go to the image tab and go to image size. That will tell us and bring up the resolution of the image. This is a 7 by 8 image, but we see the 72 dpi resolution here, which is your internet and web resolution and very low quality. As we zoom in the image, we can see the low quality of the resolution. If we try to then put this on the shirt, we're not going to have a very good looking shirt. Because Photoshop works in this resolution format and in pixels, if we try to increase the size of something and increase the resolution of something, we're only going to degrade the quality. There's only so much information in this part of the image that Photoshop can read. And as this gets bigger and bigger, the quality gets worse and worse. The main key to know and to focus on when you're doing, dealing with artwork is if you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So we want to have high quality and high resolution artwork to begin with if we can in Photoshop. And using a 300 dpi resolution image is very important. So if we're starting a new palette or a new job, we're going to go to File and Create New. Then we can pick our resolution and our size. So let's say we're going to be doing a standard page size, 8.5 by 11. And then 300 resolution is what you're going to want to work with if you can in Photoshop. Now 200, 240, 180 will work and will be much better than 72 dpi, but keep in mind that 300 is always best. On t-shirts, you really don't need to go higher than 300. A couple other things in here that you want to use is you typically want to use an RGB color. You don't want to use bitmap color or CMYK color unless we're going to be doing a CMYK image, which we'll show later, or grayscale. We want to use RGB color, and then 8-bit is fine. So that's going to open up a new palette. What we're going to show right now is the layers in Photoshop and how to create different layers of text. The most basic types of artwork are going to be a text image with a company name or company logo, sports team, or something like that. So to create text in Photoshop, we're going to come over to our palette, and we're going to click the text bar. This is going to open up a new text layer in Photoshop. Now if we pull over our Layers tab right over here on the right hand side, we'll drag our layers out here so we can see it better. Once we click the text onto the screen, it's going to open up a new layer in the Layers palette. So as you can see, we opened up a new layer and we're already working in a color separation form. Let's type in something here, Ryonet. Now, obviously you see this very, very small on the screen. 
The good thing about Photoshop text is you can modify and change it either by using the pixels and the point value up here or by free transforming the text as I'll show in a second. In Photoshop, text is always not going to be raster until it's flattened or until it's printed. So we can make this text as big as we want without degrading the quality of it. So to do this, I'm going to go to Edit and I'm going to go to Free Transform and that's going to allow us to size and skew the text as needed. If we want to make it a little crooked, whatnot. So we're opening up the text and we're making it larger to then put it on the shirt. Now to change the font, all we have to do is highlight the text and then we can scroll through our font section up here and change it if we want to. Let's go back to where we were. Another way to change the text size is to highlight it and then you can change the font size or the point value up here. So we can change it from 245 to 250 and it increases the size just slightly. I like to use the free transform tool because I feel it gives me more control. But if you really want to get precise, sometimes using the value, the point value right here is also beneficial. So this is a single layer image. To hide and view each layer in Photoshop, all we have to do is click the little eyedropper tool and that opens up the image and opens up the layer or hides it. Now let's say this is going to be a Rionet and then we're going to have a number in a different color. So in order to create a new layer in Photoshop, if we're just working with text, all we have to do again is to come over here and create the text button in our palette. We'll then open up a new text layer and as soon as we click that layer right here on our open working palette, we can see another new layer pop up. So let's say round at number 12 is going to be this image. Then we'll go ahead and use the free transform tool again. And we'll drag that. Now as you saw in the previous overview of screen printing section, we want to have a black transparency. So it's a black positive image on a white background. So let's say this Rionet number 12, the, the Rionet might be printed in white ink and the 12 might be printed in red ink or the Rionet might be printed in black and red and so on. We're always going to be working in black on a computer screen. So you kind of have to visualize it in your mind how it's going to then look on a t-shirt. It's laid up right here. Now we can see the two different layers. So if we did want to use Rionet in black, let's say, and the number 12 in red, then we'd have a two color image and it would be already separated into these two layers in Photoshop. Now once again, there's no gradient or shading in this image, so this is a spot color image, a two color spot image. Now let's say we're not creating the artwork. Let's say somebody brought it into us. In the left hand corner here we can see this is called Lion Shield JPG. So this is a JPEG image. When you bring in a JPEG image into Photoshop, you notice over here on the right hand side it's only one layer. So in order to screen print this, this is a spot color image but there are multiple colors within that spot color image, we then have to color separate it and take this yellow, red, and orange out of this image and create them from a single layer image into a multiple layer image. The one thing I like to do, the first thing in Photoshop when I open up a flat image is to create a duplicate layer. That creates a copy of this layer in order to go back in case I need to backtrack too far in my history tab. The way I create a duplicate layer in Photoshop is going to be going to the layer palette and then creating a duplicate layer. That's going to open up our background image and then a background copy. Now I'm going to hide our background image and work off the background copy. This way if we ever need to come back, we can always come back to the original background image and modify it from there. Kind of creates a backup, if you will. So now we have a one layer background copy on the image. Now what we're going to show is how to do a simple color separation, so how we can pull this yellow, red, orange, and so forth out of this single layer. To do this in Photoshop, we're going to use our layer palette and we're going to use our magic wand selection tool. Over on our palette, our magic wand is located in the top of the palette and we're going to right click and choose the magic wand. What the magic wand does is it, once you click on a part of an image, it highlights that whole section of color. So whether we're clicking on this black section right here, this red right here, his tongue right here, 
it's just highlighting that whole section of color. Now to color separate, you can use the tolerance value and typically if you have a high resolution image, you're going to be able to use a fairly high tolerance. 32 is typically what Photoshop defaults to. If you need to pull less of that color value, you can change that to 8 and that will highlight less of that color if we're working with more of a grading image. But for this spot color image, we're going to use a 32 tolerance and for most of the stuff you're going to be doing, you're going to be using a 32 tolerance. So to color separate it, we can highlight this red and then all we have to do to select the rest of the red in the, in the image is right click and choose similar. And that's going to take all that red value and highlight the similar red in the image. As you can see, it's highlighted the tongue, it's highlighted the rest of the reds in the shield. Now, to color separate this, what we need to do is right click and then layer via cut. And what the layer via cut tool does is it takes all the red that is highlighted and it cuts it into a new layer. So we can see over here in our layer palette, if we hide that, that we have the red on its own individual layer, already color separated. Now the white checkers, the white and gray checkers that you see in the background, that's called a transparent background. Typically in Photoshop you want to use a transparent background, so if there's nothing behind that color, it's transparent. So that's what that is if you, in case you're wondering. Now we'll come back and we'll highlight the layer background copy again. Now in order to color separate the next part of the image we have to make sure that our layer background is highlighted because the highlighted layer is the layer that you're going to be working on. So if I had the red highlighted over here and come came over and tried to color separate the yellow out of it, the yellow wouldn't pick up because we're not working on the correct layer. If you ever highlight something that you want to de-highlight, all you have to do is right click the highlighted portion and choose deselect and that unselects that part. So we'll come over here and choose the background copy, then let's take the orange out of the image. We'll select the orange and then we'll right click and select similar. That's going to pull all the orange out and then we'll, once all the orange is selected, we'll choose layer via cut and then so on and so forth until the image is completely color separated. So now we have a completely color separated image. We have our red, we have our orange, we have our yellow, we have our green, and we have our black. Show them all together and that pulls the whole image together. Now depending on the image, sometimes you will lose information in between the colors. So this image was fairly high resolution. We lost a little bit of information, but not a lot. It's not going to be enough for it to really matter as far as the screen print goes. So if you see a lot of missing color value between the different layers, what you can do is you can do a stroke or a choke on the different layer depending on the type of the layer. So let's say we wanted to create the red a little bit larger so then it overlapped the orange. To do that, what we would do in our function tool right down here is we would create what's called a stroke on the red. Now the stroke will automatically pull up as a bright red, so typically we're already going to be working in black once we convert the layer, so we always want to change it from red to black. And then when you use a stroke, you typically only want to use a one or two pixel stroke. To choose the different pixels on the stroke, you just choose them right here. But what a stroke does is it puts an outer border around that part of the image. So as I increase my stroke value, my pixel value, you can see it getting larger. Now we just want to basically fill in the blanks there, so using a one or two pixel stroke typically does the job. You don't need to apply a stroke to every layer. The typical, layer, the typical types of layers that you want to use a stroke on are going to be what's called a trap layer. A trap layer is the, a part of an image that encapsulates the rest or the inside of that image. Let me show you an example of a trap layer here. If you look at this hard hat right here, you can see the black surrounding the hard hat. This would be referred to as a trap layer.
basically encompasses the rest of the image. So if we then color separate this black out of the image, we'll then put a stroke around the black trapping to overlap the under yellow of the hard hat. We'll come to our function tab in our layers palette and choose stroke. Once again, we want to use the black because we're always using black in Photoshop and the end result is going to be black. And then probably like a one pixel stroke. You can see now as I zoom in that the stroke overlaps the under part of the hard hat. There's a couple different types of stroke. There's an inside or a center type of stroke, which is a little bit cleaner, but you have to increase the value of it. There's the outside stroke, and then the inside stroke would actually be more referred to as a choke. So if you wanted to then make that part of the image smaller, you would do an inside choke and then turn that into white, which would then make that part smaller. To briefly outline, once again, the reason why we want to create a stroke on a trap layer is to overprint the underlayer so that we have an easier time in registering the image and also an easier time in printing the image. Your registration has to be, can be less precise and you don't have to butt to butt registration. You have a little bit of forgiveness in there if you overlay the trapping layer. When we get on the press and print later on in the DVD, everything that we're doing right here will become more clear. So it's great to skip in between sections like we talked about in the beginning and re-reference this artwork once you've seen the printing portion. Let me show you what happens if we then try to color separate a low quality resolution image. Pull up this original shield. Now we do we would color separate it the same way. We'll highlight the blue in this section and then select similar and layer via cut. Now because this is a low quality resolution image, we color separated it, but the corners and the edges are very, very low quality, very choppy, and then if we try to screen print this, this is the same result that we get on the t-shirt. So that's why it's so important to use a high quality resolution image to begin with. If you do not have a high quality resolution image, we'll show you a couple tricks in the advanced section on how to clean that up, but typically what you'd want to do is vectorize it in a program called CorelDRAW or Illustrator and then work with it once it's vectorized because then you can create it in a higher quality format. In Photoshop, if we ever want to go back and undo something that we've previously done, we use our history palette right here. So in our history palette we can then go back through the course of our previous steps and undo these previous steps. It's an important palette to use in Photoshop because sometimes you don't do things the right way and need to reverse that action. Let's say we wanted to add some text onto this image. We wanted to add the text down here. Well first of all we'll have to create a bigger palette because we don't have any room to add the text down here. So to do that we'll go to image and we'll go to canvas size and that chooses the size of the canvas. This doesn't mess with resolution at all, it just changes the size of our working palette. So we're going to increase the height and this selects the direction of the height we want to increase. So whether you want to create the whole canvas size or just a part of it, in this case we just want to increase the, the bottom of it, we'll then change that from 12 to 15 and that's going to give us some area down here to add text. Then we just come quickly here and select the text portion of our palette and we'll put the text down here. Now that our artwork is color separated, we'll then print our film positives out. Now obviously we're looking at the red shield right here. If we were to print this directly to a printer right now, it would print in red. We don't want it to print in red, we want it to print in black. So we have to convert all these colors into black before we can print them. There are a couple different methods that you can use in order to convert the color portion of the image into black. The first is going to be your color overlay on this particular layer. To use color overlay, you have to be on a transparent background and your image that you're going to overlay with black all has to be on the same layer. We'll show color overlay by going into the layer menu, then pulling down and going to layer style and using color overlay. Now we want to select 
color overlay in black. So we'll select the color and then we'll change it from red to black by selecting the little crop mark here, little box that makes sure it's 100% black. Then we'll select preview and that's going to show us that we took the red and then we overlaid it with black. To create a color overlay on all the layers, what we want to do is instead of having to come into the layer menu and do this to each individual layer, we can just go to our layers palette over here, right click it, and choose copy layer style. Then we'll click the le next layer and we'll right click it again and put paste layer style. And that'll paste layer style onto all our colors. Obviously the back part of this image is already black so we don't have to color overlay that. So now we look at the image again and it's all in black ready for printing. To print this image we want to ensure that our image is centered on the palette so we'll use our crop bar to do that if it's already not centered. This is the crop tool and we'll bring crop tool around the image both vertically and horizontally. Shrink it if we need to. And then we'll crop it. It's very important to work on a centered image because if you're not working on a centered image it's harder to then lay out the artwork when you go to expose the screen and then when you register it on the press. The next step is we'll just simply highlight each layer at a time and print each individual layer one at a time. To do that, we'll first choose our image size. Now this is a fairly large image. This is a 20 by 12 image. That's probably going to be too large to put on a shirt. So we're going to change this down to let's say a 12, 7 by 12 image. That changes the size and because we're decreasing the size, it doesn't degrade the quality of the image at all. Next thing we'll do is we'll see how the image is going to print in the preview mode. So we'll go to print and that brings up a preview screen. We'll select our printer. We have a lot of printers to choose from so we'll show a couple different types. Let's use this Epson 2200 which would also work very similar to the R1900 or the 1400. We'll go to page setup and we'll select our layout which will be landscape. Then we'll select our page size which is going to be 8.5 by 14. When you use your page size, you can see the palette size right here. Your page size needs to be bigger than your image size. If it's not bigger than your image size, then you won't be able to put registration marks or center crop marks, which we'll talk about next. Registration marks around the outside of the image allow you to then register each color when you put it on the press and allow you to line it up in the darkroom, which we'll show next. To select color registration marks in the print menu of Photoshop, come up here and change the menu from color management to color output. Well, you want to always use center crop marks. This centers the image up in the very center of the image and we want to use corner or registration marks. That'll put registration marks around the edge of the image. Now depending on the type of printer, sometimes these registration marks will print fairly light and if that's the case then you might have to come back and put manual registration marks which will show very quickly in a second. But in Photoshop, in the print menu, this is how you select registration marks and center crop marks. Once these are selected, we then can go ahead and print the image. We'll talk a little bit more about different types of printers and print settings, but right now we're just discussing how to set up the image for printing. Once that image is printed, we come back to Photoshop and highlight the next layer. This would be the orange layer. Once that layer is highlighted and only that layer is highlighted, we'll come back and we'll choose our print screen again. Now this is already set up. We have to select output, registration marks, and center crop marks once again. And that's this portion of the image. Then we'll hit print. We'll do the same process for each layer until our image is completely printed out and every layer has been printed. The only thing that's going to be different on this image is because we have a text layer that's going to go along with the black, when we go to print the text layer we want to highlight both the black layer and the text layer. 
I recommend keeping text on a separate layer in Photoshop. If you combine it with another layer, which you can do by once the two layers are highlighted, you can come up here and put uh, choose your layer menu and then go to merge visible. That will merge both these layers into the same layer. But the minute you combine text into another layer, it's going to make that text from a vector format which allows us to skew it and size it and it gives the printer very precise information in order to print to a raster format which is still going to be high quality but you have less control over it and you could end up especially if you're using an image that has half tones in it as we'll show later actually putting half tones around the edge of your text so you want to keep your text in a separate layer we're going to go ahead and do the history tab and undo the merge visible now that you can see all the black you simply highlight the two layers that we're going to be printing at the same time. Go to the print screen one last time and select output registration marks and center crop marks. Now because we're not actually sending this to the printer we have to select these marks every time but once we hit print it saves these settings so each time you print the next layer you don't have to reselect the marks. Once your image is color separated and printed you always want to save a copy of the image as your color separated image. So we'll go to file We'll go to Save As, and in our clip art folder, videos will show Lion, Shield, and then I'll put Sep, so I know that that's the separated version of our image. I don't want to save over the original version in case we have to come back and use that for something else later. I wanted to show the print preview process in an older version of Photoshop. This is Photoshop 7, a few less bells and whistles than the new CS3, CS4. In this, instead of going to just print, you go to print with preview, and then we can set up the image. So now we have to go to page setup, we'll select our paper size, so now we'll go to page setup, we'll select our printer as the Epson 2200, we'll select the paper size 8.5 by 14, and landscape. And now you do so, you want to make sure you select show more options and you do want to make sure that not color management is selected, output is selected. So it's the same as CS3 and CS4, but you just had a different window here. Then you just select registration marks and center crop marks and then send it to the printer. So roughly the same, but just a little bit different version of the print menu. Instead of print, it's print with preview. One last thing we wanted to show for spot color separations in Photoshop is how to create a white underbase. Now you want to create a white underbase if you're going to be printing bright colors on a black shirt. If you print a bright color, let's say this red and this green, directly on a black shirt without a white underbase, it's going to look very muted. So instead of being a bright red or a bright green, it's going to look very dull. So what we have to do is create a duplicate layer of this image and create one screen with just the white background on it. So this would be then three colors. It would be a white background, the red, and also the green. We'll quickly show how to do that in Photoshop. Now remember, we have a flat image over here, but the first thing we want to do is we want to create a duplicate background layer. So we'll go to the layer menu, create a duplicate layer. Now we'll hide our background, and then let's go proceed and do color separations. Just select the red, right click, layer via cut, select the green, right click, layer via cut. So now we already have our two colors separated. Fairly quick and simple. Now, to create the white background, what we want to do is we want to create a third layer with both images on it. We'll do one more duplicate layer of the background. And with this layer, we want to work on a transparent background. So to do that, instead of using our magic wand tool, we'll use our magic eraser tool. This is your eraser. You can come in here and select the image and erase it. But we don't want to have to do that manually, so we'll use our magic eraser tool. Right click the eraser bar and select Magic Eraser. Then we click the white and it will automatically take out the white. Another way to take out the white without having to manually come in here and select each section of the white to erase it is to use your Magic Wand tool, highlight the white part of the image, select the similar part, and instead of cutting it just simply hit your delete button. and That will take all the white out of the image. Either way, you want to get your image on a transparent background. Now that the image is on a transparent background, we can show you another way to convert these colors into black. That's going to be using the image 
tab or menu of Photoshop and going into adjustments and doing what's called a threshold. Now what a threshold does is it takes all the color value out of that layer. So whether you're using an image that has gradients in it or an image that has multiple colors in it, it'll take all that color value out and turn it into black and into a spot color black. So you can see using the threshold tool, see the two color values there. We put it below the color values, nothing shows up. We want to boost it up so it turns both to black. Now that the two are in black, the only other thing that we want to do is we want to choke the underbase. We want to choke the underbase so that it doesn't poke out of the overprint. Our red and our green will be then overprinted this underbase when we put it on the press and screen print it. If we don't choke the underbase, we can have the white poking out the ends, and then it's really difficult to screen print and it doesn't look as good or professional. So to choke it, we'll come to our effects bar and we'll put a stroke on it. We want to change our stroke to white. And instead of using the outside, we want to put a stroke on the inside. And that shrinks it. If you can see, this is the image and this is the image choked. Probably just a simple one or two pixel, you don't need to choke it a lot. But that allows it to slightly decrease the underbase so that when we overprint it, we don't have registration problems. Now, we've already showed how to go ahead and convert these other two layers to black and then print them. But that is how you create an underbase in Photoshop for white underbasing on black garments. Everything that we've done in Photoshop so far has dealt with spot color images. The reason we spend so much time in it is because the majority of stuff you're going to do, especially starting out, is going to be just simple spot color stuff like we were doing before. However, let's talk a little bit about gradients. This is a multiple color gradient, full color image. Now to do this, we can either print it in four color process or we could grayscale it. This is also a gradient image, but this would probably be going on a black shirt because it already has a black background and we would have to color separate it. So either of these images, color separating them, could be fairly difficult if we try to do it in the traditional spot color way. Let's show, show you here what happens. If we just select our magic wand tool and we select part of the image, it only selects part of that gray. It doesn't select all the gray in the image. And then if we go to select similar, it still doesn't select all the gray. It leaves out the half tones. So, or it leaves out the gradient portion of that image. In order to select that gradient, and in order to do a four color process print, and also to create this into a gray scale, so it's a one color gradient print, we'd recommend checking out the advanced portion of Photoshop on this DVD.